Hey everybody, Blue here from Blue Outside, and today I'm going to start a series on wild edibles. We're going to start off with this little gem, the purple dead nettle. Stay with me. I'm going to start a series on wild edibles. So the first plant I want to talk about is this purple little gem that I, I think it's a gem just because of everything that I've learned about it and its abundance. It's literally everywhere behind me. So I took some notes because I don't want to leave anything out and kind of want to get some very important information to you. Uh, disclaimer, not a uh, wild edible expert, so you need to do your own research and learn to identify this on your own. And hopefully what I'm telling you right now will pique an interest in you to go out and look for wild edibles in your own area and learn about them so if you're in a survival situation or even just as a uh, food supplement it's there for you so um, let's go ahead and start what I want to talk about is called the uh, purple dead nettle okay the reason why it's called dead nettle is because there's nothing on here that stings not because it's poisonous which is what when I found this plant I was like Ugh, that sounds scary but it's not so it's not poisonous at all the benefits are it's got vitamin A vitamin C vitamin K and several B vitamins in it it's got antioxidants uh, the minerals in it are calcium iron magnesium and it has amino acids and it's actually really good for your immune system it will help with allergies and it's an anti-inflammatory it does have a look-alike look-alike is called henbit I think that's how it is I'll go ahead and put the word right here so I don't get that confused um, it's look-alike I've seen pictures of it they look almost identical and they're both edible so even if you don't find this one and you find what it looks like it most likely it's probably henbit and it's probably gonna be safe to eat also uh, the entire plant is edible the stems the leaves the flowers possibly the roots I would say if the whole plants edible when you collect them what you want to do is you want to take them from about a half inch from the base or from the ground and just snap them off because these reproduce through the root system so it doesn't need to have you don't need to have a bag with holes in it like if you're out collecting mushrooms and dump the spores everywhere so that's a good way you know you don't have to worry about it not be able to come back and you have an abundant supply every spring because this is a spring flower it's, or weed whatever you want to call them we'll call it a flower it comes up in spring and I've had it in my backyard I know people have it in their front yard um, it's alongside ditches this is in the middle of a field so it's readily available to me so hopefully you'll find it and be like hey it's readily available to me also um, when you collect it after you snap it off of a half inch, shake it off. Make sure there's no bugs living in it. Even though that's just extra protein. So, um, it's ready to go from there. What you can do is rinse it in cool water and dry it out. So if, you have, uh, if you're out in the wild, get it wet, rinse it in cool water, dab it dry with your handkerchief, whatever you gotta do. Don't soak it, it'll get mushy and lose all its flavor. You can eat it like a salad. Uh, it's got a real grassy taste. Um, the tops are kind of sweet, not like, you know, ice cream sweet, but they're sweet. What I do is I'll collect a bunch of them and I'll dehydrate them. Uh, you can dehydrate them from six to eight hours, usually what it takes. I, my dehydrator runs hot, so I was able to do it in four. Then you take the leaves, because I dehydrated the whole plant, took the leaves off and the, the flower aspect of it and just make a tea out of it. It's uh, eight ounces of water for three tablespoons of dried dead nettle. Um, it literally tastes just like green tea, so it's good there. You can also dehydrate it in an oven at 175 for eight to six, 10 hours if you don't have a dehydrator. Okay, it is found in fields on the roadside, um, ditches, stuff like that kind of be careful where you find it because it could be sprayed with chemicals it could be 
have waste on it, whatever. So uh, something else I found is the honeybees like it. There's honeybees out here right now. Oh, it's getting kind of dark and getting kind of chilly, so they're headed home. Hopefully this entices you to do your own research and go out and look for wild animals in your own backyard or in a field. So just be safe when you do it. Do your research. Uh, most of the research I've done, a lot of things have a look alike that is poisonous. This one has a look like that's not poisonous. So you can learn two ways from that go from there. Uh, it's part of the mint family, so treat it like a mint. I've seen uh, recipes online where it's in a rice casserole dish, so I'm guessing you get plenty of it. You can treat it like spinach. So that's all I got for, for it. I uh, hope to do more like this. Um, as you look, there's green onions here. I don't know if these are considered wild green onions. They grow in the wild, whatever. So that's all I got for now. Go ahead and hit uh, the subscribe button if you're new to this channel and haven't watched anything. I got more to come. Go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Tell me if this is something you've never heard of or tell me this is something that you uh, make part of your routine. I know I'm going to start making it part of mine, start carrying it, make teas out of it. Every time I go out, drink tea of it, make it into tea, drink it. So I know there's plenty of it. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember, enjoy the outside.